Some men rise, some men fall, some help others to reach the top, while others stand watch. Who are we? We are the risk takers. We are the fighters. The regular everyday men, the downtrodden, and the uprisen. And this is The Daddy Show. All right, everyone, welcome back to The Daddy Show. Sorry about the hair, it's been a day. I've got the DIY Rat GDO up and running. I'm gonna show that to you now. So here we go. The ladder here. <clears throat> All right. So this is my homemade DIY Rat GDO. This is my own rendition of the uh, the Rat Rat GDO that's out there. And uh, you can see the three resistors, two transistors, my three wires coming in from right there. And the power plug, I'm eventually going to get in behind here and solder in a power wire to go straight to this so I don't have to have a power plug. But then you can see on the back where I ran my ground from the white wire. My red wire comes into here, into the transistors. And then ground, or sorry, then the black wire comes over here through the resistor and then on to plug or a D7 on the chip. And then the uh, obviously the other resistors this one in the middle going at an angle. It's hard to do this one-handed. Um, yeah, this one in the middle going at an angle. That one goes back to ground. The one at the top goes from the D1 signal coming out of the transistor over to ground. The, the resistor at the top isn't coming from the signal from the tran from the transistor, it's coming from D1. So D1 is a transmit, D2 is the receive. And uh, so the top transistor is going, the middle post is going into D1. The right side, which would be the top post, is going into ground. The bottom post is where the red wire feeds in. And then the red wire then feeds in over to the middle of the bottom transistor. And then the left post runs into D2. The right post runs to ground. So that's basically it. It's pretty simple. It was really easy to set up. And if this is something that everybody thinks they would like to have, I in buying this to do this myself, in doing this in order to do the DIY and do it myself, um, I had to buy a lot of supplies just because it came in packages of more than one and I couldn't buy just one of anything. So I've got a decent amount of resistors, um, some transistors, and a few of the D1 mini boards. And I've got a bunch of the prototype boards. The point being, I'm thinking about giving away four of these. So I've got enough to make five, and I'm thinking about just giving away four. The whole point of having the Rat GDO workaround was to get away from third-party stuff. I know there's a lot of talk on the internet, on Reddit and GitHub and everything about the Rat GDO project and um, whether or not they should be hoarding the, the schematics and whatever. And that's neither here nor there. I'm not going to comment on that. Um, I just know some people are frustrated by it. So they luckily or they, they generously gave the schematics and some examples. And so I made my own, did the layout a little bit different of the resistors and the transistors. Um, that's slightly different than what they show, but it the circuitry is the same. And this will hopefully help you to work around the MyQ not working, so you don't have to use MyQ. Um, this also makes it a lot easier than my previous video where you had to run another wire all the way up on the ceiling and over to a um, a reed switch, it takes that completely out of the out of the equation. It just gives you three wires, you plug it in, and boom. So you do have to solder. But if you would like to leave a like, subscribe, and a comment on what you think of this, whether or not you want one, I will do a drawing and give away four of these. I'll make the other four and give them away. So I was thinking about potentially selling them, but I thought, you know what, that's not right. That kind of defeats the whole purpose. So I'm gonna give four away. 
Now, if anybody would like me to make some, I will have to uh, please leave a comment if you'd like me to make you one, especially after I've given the other four away. If you would still like me to make you one, I'm happy to do that. And um, I'll have to work out what that looks like, you know, what that costs and everything. It's not going to be very much. It didn't cost me a whole lot to make this. Um, so I'll probably put a few dollars for the supplies because that's basically what it costs. And then a couple dollars to, for my time and soldering. And that's basically it. So on shipping though, the shipping is probably going to be the biggest part. Um, probably only going to be able to do the, do the giveaway in the continental US just because of shipping. Um, we'll see. But anyway, for now, we'll do the giveaway. If you'd like one and you're in the continental US, please subscribe, leave a like and a comment. And I will put you in a drawing to give four of these away. Hopefully here within the next, I'll probably do it the next month, maybe in time for Christmas. Maybe, maybe decide the winner right before Christmas. And uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe right after New Year's. I don't know. There's a lot I still got to figure out here as far as that goes. But it works. It's great. And so let me show you how it works. Alrighty, folks. We are here showing you the garage door with the new DIY Rat GDO hooked up and running. You can see here I've got a screenshot of the phone and I've put in four entities from the Rat GDO. There are a lot of entities and I can show you that really quickly here in a minute. But very simply, you click the garage up and down button and the garage goes up. And you can see I have quite a few notifications. Now you can also control the light off and on and then we can go back down and there I get my notifications that it's closed and again while it's closed turn the light on and off if you like you can check the obstruction sensors you can also lock all the remotes out so that if you have a vehicle outside in the driveway you can actually lock that remote out so it can't open the door so that might be something you might want to set up at night to maybe set an automation every night to happen who knows up to you anywho let's go over here to the entities and here is the ESP home device screen for the rat GDO and you can see the info at the top, controls, you've got the door and the light, toggle the light on, off and on. And then we've got the sensors, which there's no motion sensor on this garage door, so it just shows clear, um, even though it's something that's not hooked up. Obstruction will say okay or problem, problem being if something breaks the beam. And then you've got some other configuration things to mess with and some diagnostic stuff to look at. Um, you can see I don't have any of the dry contacts since we're just using the three wires, all the automations, and everything else that goes along with it. So it's wonderful, and I love it. I almost forgot to show you guys the coolest feature of Rat GDO and having it set up this way. You long hold, and now we have a normal cover control. So I can say, hey, I want it open 60%, and boom! It opens and stops automatically at 60%. Let's say I want to close it now. You can go up to, let's say 83%. And it just automatically will go up to 83% and stop. And then let's say, okay, well, I don't want an 83. Let's move it down to a uh, 32%. And there it goes. It automatically stopped at 32%. The coolest feature of the whole thing. So that's amazing. I love it. And there we go. 
All right, everyone, here we are looking at the breadboard that I did based on the RAT-RATGDO project. I'll have a link to that in the description. And this part of the video is for those that really want to do the DIY portion of the RAT-RATGDO project. <clears throat> um, there's nothing wrong with going out and buying the rat gdo and supporting that project in that way um, absolutely nothing wrong with that and i'm not not saying that in this video and i don't want it want it to come across that way either i just know that they have a pretty good lead time uh, last i checked and by the time you watch this video who knows but they also are charging a decent amount in my opinion for something that you can make yourself if you are so inclined and able to do so. So that's what this video is about. It's about how to make it yourself if that's something you really want to do. If that's not something you're capable of, don't feel comfortable with, obviously don't do that. By all means, go out and uh, purchase the one that's already done and you're good to go. So um, the purpose of this, this part of the video is to help those that want to help themselves, I guess, for lack of a better, better way to put it. So. I copied the breadboard that they put on the rat-ratgdo project on GitHub. And if I'm not looking at the camera, I'm sorry, I'm looking over at my screen here. <clears throat> so I've got it pulled up right here. And I wanted to go over this very quickly. I'm going to I'm going to go over my board that I designed as well very quickly so everybody can understand how things work so you can see how simple this really is. And so even if you don't have a great understanding of electronics and the these chips and everything you can still do this yourself you really can even if you've never done it before um, the soldering part you'll want to practice before you go and do it on you know these these more uh, sensitive components but it's definitely something a beginner, beginner could do if they're so inclined so that being said what I did is <clears throat> I looked at when I went to the RAT-RATGDO project, obviously I looked through everything, all of their documentation, and I found this breadboard that you're seeing now, and I also found this schematic. There's other schematics out there for other chipsets. So this is for the D1 Mini, which is what I have right here. And so this one applies to me. They have the ESP3266. Um, they have the, um, the full-size 32, or ESP32. They have a couple others as well, so um, they've got pretty much anything that you would want to use for this project listed and shown, so it's it's awesome. So definitely go check that out if you're interested at all. If you're not interested in making it yourself, if you're interested in seeing how it works, go check it out. Anyway, so here we have the, the schematic, and so if you, even if you don't know much about electronics this is pretty easy to follow especially if you break it down so we know we only have three wires coming in the black red and white and the black comes up over here ultimately to d7 on the chip and as you can see right here that's labeled and then it goes through a resistor first so between this black wire and this pin we need a resistor which trying to move this out of the way and not be in the way all right there we go which is what this resistor right here does as you can see I've got my black wire coming in from the garage door opener connects with all of these oh, these all connect in a row so all of these if you don't know how a breadboard works all of these this direction connect and all of these up here connect this direction so anything you put in this hole here is connected to everything else on all these holes. Anything in this hole would be connected to everything else in these. So hopefully that makes sense. And then everything in the middle here obviously is like I just said, runs this way. So anything connected in this hole will also be connected to this one. And this one and this one and this one. So all of them. That's how this works. So, this black wire comes in, connects to this resistor right here, which then connects over to here. You can't see it in this picture. You can see it a little bit better in the breadboard on the Rat Rat GDO website. Um, <laughs> it sounds funny, it sounds like I'm stuttering. I'm really not, it's Rat Rat GDO. And uh, so then, 
this connects in right here with these two, with this resistor and this resistor. Wire continues on over here to D7. And this resistor then connects back to ground. That basically finishes off this right here. We have the resistor, which is this one right here. So this resistor here is resistor one. So we'll just call that resistor one. And then this resistor here and the schematic resistor two is this one right here. So resistor three is this guy right here. So that breaks down the three resistors. That's all there are, one, two, and three, and two transistors. So we have three wires and two transistors. So we've traced the black wire and we know how it's supposed to run. So we have one resistor continues on to D7. Another resistor goes in between this resistor and D7 back to ground, which is exactly what this does. And then let's follow the red wire. So the red wire, and since I have this here and this here, I'll go ahead and point those out. That means there's a connection. If you notice, this one here doesn't have a dot. That means this circuit does not connect to this circuit but this one does connect to this. There's, see the little dots there? <clears throat> so, it, it can be a little confusing sometimes, but we know that this is going to run here to this guy, and we know that this guy is not connected to this guy. But this one and this one are connected to this one, so that's where it's a little confusing. But, if we break it down, the red wire comes in, comes down here to the G terminal on the transistor, which is the gate. And then the other end of the red wire comes down to the D terminal on the transistor, which is the drain. And so if we take a look at our two red or our red wire coming in over here in the picture, drag that out. All right, we've got the red wire coming in from the garage door right here. It branches off into these two wires that go to the transistors. So you notice one goes to the, what I'm gonna call the left side of the transistor. And I've got both of the transistors facing the same direction with the rounded side down and the flat side up so that I can kind of keep track of where the gate is a lot easier. So the gate is the one in the middle, obviously. <laughs> the one in the middle every time. Um, but then where the drain and the source are is on the same side for both of them, if that makes sense. So the drain in this case is the right side post on both of them, and the source is the left side post, and the gate is the middle. So one red wire comes in to the drain on this guy. And if we look at our schematic we have a red wire that comes into the drain so on this one where it comes into the drain we know the gate has to connect to d1 with the resistor in between so let's look and see if the gate from this one which is the middle so that's this yellow wire does the gate from this one go to d1 if we follow that all the way over right here boop it runs right to D1. So we have that part of the circuit correct. We know we have the red wire feeding in to the drain side of this resistor. And we know we have the gate terminal on the resistor connected to D1. So we have this part of the schematic right here complete. Now do we have a resistor between? On this schematic, I don't have one coming from here or in between here because that's what this resistor up here does and I, I know that's kind of hard to, to, to see here but because it's connected to ground this resistor right here connects to ground and then comes into the transistor system right there and that ultimately is this transistor or this resistor right here and so then let's look at the other red wire it comes into the gate side and then from the gate, or from that transistor, we know the drain side is gonna go to D2. 
and the source goes to ground. The source on the other one goes to ground as well. So, we already know where our drain side is. So our source side is this side. And that goes, bloop, up here to the ground. Okay. Oh, I'm saying okay like you're going to say, yeah, I get it. And then, so on this one, we have the drain side, the gate side, and the source side. Remember, these are all connected. So the source comes in here. This source is connected to the ground on this side. And I do have a jumper wire that you can't see in this picture. Further down to the right on the breadboard, I have a jumper wire that connects this ground here over to this ground here. It's happening over here outside the picture, but that's connecting both sides of the breadboard together as one ground. So hopefully that, that makes sense for you. If you look at the breadboard on the Rat Rat GDO GitHub page, you'll see that wire kind of off to the side as well. You can't see it finishing its connection um, down, down here in the bottom, but you can see it connected up at the top. So um, that's what that's for, is to connect the two ground sides together. Because if you'll notice, we have a ground wire down here. Sorry, I have to look over around my, my equipment. And it is going to the ground terminal on the chip. So it's labeled as a G. So you, you can't mess that one up. G is ground on the D1 Mini. And you just have a wire that goes from the ground to the ground. And that connects this whole set of ground terminals together. And when you connect your jumper wire from this side to this side, all of these now are connected together with this side to the ground in the D1 Mini. So that's how that works. So back to the transistor. We have, we know we have our red wire coming in the gate and we have a source going to ground. And so does our drain run over to D2? Yes, it does. So we have, we know we have the circuitry correct on both transistors running into the chip and with our red wire. And we know we have our everything with our black wire correct. So now let's look at the white wire for the ground. So the white wire for the ground, I'm going to back up here on my drawings. The white wire is this one here coming in from the garage door. That connects into the ground, which connects all of these grounds together. This guy and this guy. Because we have that jumper out of the screen, going from that side to this side, connecting everything together, which also connects this here. So the ground from the garage door is now connected to the ground on the chip, which connects to the ground from the power which also connects to the ground on the other side up here due to our jumper wire and connects all of these things back to ground. So, when we look at our schematic, the white comes in, goes directly to ground, which is what this one does. We also have the source coming to ground on one side, source coming to ground on the other side. We have one side of that resistor running to directly to ground and then we have the chip running to ground. The ground going to the ground coming in from the white. As you can see right here. This line right here. So, we know now we have all that set up correctly. So that's really as simple as it is. Just break it down one little piece at a time and you should be able to walk through this pretty easily. Hopefully this video helps. Hopefully it's not, not drawing out too long or beating a dead horse too much. So now I'm going to show you what my chip looks like based on this information. And what I did is I took this breadboard and I plugged in the red wire, black, uh, the black wire, the red wire, and the white wire from the garage door into the breadboard and tested the circuit to make sure it worked, and it did. So I knew my circuit was correct. So I know all of that is good to go. So that being said, let's look at the chip. So, or the, the prototype. So here's what I built. I've got my D1 Mini here, obviously. We have D1, D2, ground, and D7. Those are the pins 
that we want to basically wire to. And so what I did is I marked my black just to keep it easy to see because I know if this side's black and I made the other opposite side white for the ground, I know my red's gonna go in the middle. So that's how I kept it straight in my head. So if we follow this, let's start with the ground. So we've got the ground here. It's gonna come in from, from the garage door. It, I soldered it on the bottom to go up this way. And when you see the bottom, it's going to be flipped. So the top will be the bottom, bottom will be the top. Middle is going to stay the middle, obviously. <clears throat> so I ran the white, or ran the solder up out of the, I connected with the bottom of this terminal underneath the chip, or underneath the prototype board. Ran up over here and ended right here. So that's how I soldered. That's all I did basically with the ground wire as far as coming in. So then from there, I soldered this resistor to ground, this resistor to ground, and uh, ran soldered, ran solder up to ground from this guy. And then I ran a jumper wire from here up to the ground right here. So that grounded the source side of this tr transistor. Because remember in my schematic, or in my breadboard, the right side of the transistors, what I'm calling the right side, was, this, was the source which ran back to ground. So if you look, you can see if you turn the resistor, you got the flat side here, the round side here, this is the right side, and this is the right side those need to run to ground. So I have this one going straight up to ground and this one with a jumper wire coming up here to ground. So those are grounded, so those are correct. We know that's correct with our circuit from the breadboard. And we know that we had to go back to ground with two of our resistors. This one and this one. One side of them goes to ground. That's what these dots are telling us, that those connect to ground. We have one two resistors going to ground. And so if we follow the black wire now, I soldered it down. Over here it goes through this resistor, which is exactly what this shows. Black wire coming up through a resistor, connecting to another resistor, which is this one right here. Moving on to D7, which it does right here. You can barely see the jumper wire right here underneath. I have a jumper wire connected here, and it jumps over and comes up to D7. And then the, so that completes this line right here. And now we need another resistor connecting in here and running to ground. So we have a resistor right here connected in and running to ground. Pretty simple. And now let's trace our red wire. So the red wire will come in here, obviously, it's the last one left. I ran it over here, up, and then in. So we know that our red wire comes in on the left side or the drain side, which I made the left side on these transistors, following the logic of, of the schematic. And so we know it comes in the left side of one and in the gate of the other. So I brought it in to the left side of this one and jumped it straight across to the gate in the center of this one. So I now know that I have my red wire running to the correct spots on my transistors. And I know I've got this resistor correct, this resistor correct, and then we have this resistor coming from the gate between the D1 and the transistor, we have this resistor going to ground. So let's look at the gate on this transistor, because that's the one where the red wire comes in the left side. Red wire comes in the left side, so the gate has a resistor between D1 and ground. So the gate has a resistor between D1 and ground. So we know that we have that circuit correct. So 
So hopefully you're still following. <clears throat> And then if we look again at this side, we know it's coming in the gate, which I pointed out right here. And then it's coming out the drain side, which is the, the left side, and going to D2. So let's see how that works. So we have it coming out of the left side right here. I brought it over, up, and into D2. So we know that's correct. We've already tracked the ground. We know we have them grounded correctly. We know we have the resistors in the right place. We have the outputs and inputs to the transistors run to the right direction right place we know we're good so that's really all it took now let me show you what the bottom looks like so you can kind of see what that all looks like underneath so we have the white wire or ground wire coming in right here we have the red wire coming in right here and we have the black wire coming in from the garage door right here so the black wire runs up right here through that resistor over to here and then it jumps over to D7. Then the red wire I soldered straight across and you remember when it went up, well since we flipped it over it comes down and comes over here. So it comes into the left side of one of the transistors and then the gate of the other transistor. And then the ground wire continues on through this wire to the ground terminal on the D1 Mini. So now I'm going to trace the outputs. So out of the, let's see, that would be the left side of the top or left side of the bottom transistor goes to D2. So that comes over, up and over to D2. The right side, the source side, connects to this white wire and goes to ground. Okay? And then the other transistor, which is sitting right here, it's actually it's actually sitting right here. One, two, and three. Those are its three three posts that you can't see from this side. So the red wire came in. <coughs> Excuse me. The red wire came into the side of this one, out of the middle to D1, and then comes out of the S or source to ground. And so let me circle. This is the other, the other three posts for the bottom transistor, and these are the three posts for the top transistor in this picture. So you have one, two, three, and one, two, three. So if we flip it back over, you can see we have one, two, three, and one, two, three. So I know that's a little complicated. I probably made it more complicated than it needs to be. But if you just follow this logic very simply, it's really pretty simple to see where everything goes. A black wire in, the red wire in, the white wire in. And then we just need to trace this red wire coming in to the right post on one of the transistors and then the correct post on the other transistor. That's really all I gotta do. That's the worst part of it. So if you wanna use this whole setup right here as an example, please do. Please use this. This um, this could probably actually be be shortened up and be put on a smaller board. This is actually just the smallest prototype board that I had, and so I was able to put this guy at a at an angle here. If I was working with less room, I probably would have put this post here in this one and run it straight up over here. So it'd be running right here over the top of all of this, so it's not touching anything. And then this one, I would have moved over to here from here. And so it would have moved over a bit and I would have shortened up the legs and probably only made it its bare minimum of three or four. Well, that's one, two, three, four, five, five wide. So I would have put it here and it had been one, two, three, four, five. So it would only, only would have come to here. So this post would be here. 
and so I could you could probably shorten this whole thing to about here and make it pretty small that's that's pretty small it's not very big to begin with as you can see in the beginning of the video it's pretty small unit so um, that's what I would do differently working with less space since I had this space I went ahead and used it and uh, if I didn't have the space obviously I would pull everything closer together and shorten it up a bit so that's basically it if you have any questions please leave a comment if you want to enter the drawing for four of the one of four of these please leave a comment a like and a subscribe and I'll enter you for a drawing for one of those four and like I said if you have a question comment or any ideas or anything please leave a comment this is way drawn out I know this is way I'm probably made it way more complicated than it needed to be but it's really really simple and if you need extra explanation definitely reach out in the comments and I'm happy to help in any way that I can so that now if you are going to make this uh, make this yourself the one thing I will recommend is that you use a um, a spacer for lack of a better term underneath all of these so solder in all of these to the chip because it doesn't come with them soldered in it comes with the pieces you need but it doesn't come with them soldered in now so you're going to have a piece like this now let's see if I can get it to focus on it no I can't there that's I'm sorry my camera's not working with me here so you would put the chip the D1 mini would sit up on here and solder all these so that would be the part that's sticking up right here on the top would be this this short side the long pieces are what will stick down underneath the board and then you'll use what I'm calling a spacer that looks like this and solder this to the proto board underneath the chip where you want the chip to be that way I lost my piece that way you can just take this that's soldered to the D1 mini you can just push it straight in like that and if anything goes wrong with the chip it breaks fails something goofy happens you fry it by accident um, power outage power surge something happens right the chip goes out you can just pull the chip straight out of the board of the proto board and just drop a new chip in so or let's say you want to maybe you have another d1 mini that has something different about it that you like in the future but it has still has the same pinouts you can just pull that pull the old one out drop the new one in so that gives you a that's my one recommendation for setting this up yourself is to just make sure that you think ahead and try to make it so that if something breaks that you can replace it obviously putting in resistors and transistors those are pretty easy to desolder and drop back in and drop in a new one and resolder that's fairly simple the chips are a little, more, little harder to do with all the connections that they have if you solder them straight to the proto board so now if you're looking to if you're looking to power the d1 mini from your garage door directly which is what i'm going to do eventually you'll want to use the 3.3 volt post here because the output from the board is most likely 3.3 volts it'll say and the documentation for that is on the rat gdo github page so research that um, research it well read all the instructions read everything and uh, be as exhaustive as you can on your research on doing this before you do anything but the output from the garage door and especially on mine is 3.3 volts based on the model that I have and so you'll want to take that 3.3 volts out of the garage door and into this post here and that will power the entire thing for you so if you have a 5 volt output obviously you would go here to this so it's that simple hopefully that helps and I'll leave a link to everything in the description the supplies that I bought so you can go on and get them yourself and I will leave a link to both projects the rat GDO and the rat dash rat GDO project so you can go research it for yourself and that's all I got so if you would like to me to make you one um, if you don't get one in the giveaway please uh, send me a message 
um, or leave a comment and I'll be happy to look into doing that for you and send that out I need to figure out what shipping might be these things are so light and small shipping is probably gonna be a, a base of like three or four dollars I would think and it should be pretty cheap in the continental US anyway um, so that should be about what that is and I think I would probably do I'm thinking I'm I'm thinking right now probably around six or eight dollars to make the chip or to make build the whole thing for you and I'll go ahead and since it's a the ESP 8266 D1 mini I can go ahead and flash that with the firmware for you and I will probably do that for the four that I give away that way it's basically ready to go one thing before we go I do have to remember to tell you that let me get rid of all these red lines. This D1 is currently programmed for D4 in the um, in the YAML file, at least the one that I used. So I went in and just changed D4 to D1 in the YAML file. It was super easy. Now you could change the location of this to come down to D4, or you can change your your setup of the transistors move them around so that it, it comes out of this one straight into d4 you could do that um, completely up to you totally your discretion you can t turn them around you can do whatever you want on the one that you build however you want to make it work whatever makes sense to you by all means go do it i'm just showing you how i did it um, so for me the way i set it up the way I kept everything straight in my head, kept the logic right, was to do it the way that I did it. And so I made D1, out of convenience, my pin for the transmit. Um, and the, again, the, something I don't think I've said enough was that D2 is received, D1 is transmit. And so when you're looking at your ammo file, find the transmit pin out. It'll say D4, change it to D1. If it says D1, great. I think some of the newer ones, or some of the other, some of the other files on GitHub, I think say D1 and have been changed to D1. It depends on which board you, board model you use from the Rat GDO project. And I think I did 2.0. They're up to 2.5 and 2.5 I now on their their board types. And I think I, if I remember correctly, I used 2.0. I have to double check to be 100% on that, but I'm I'm 90% sure I used 2.0. So it said D4. I just changed the, the YAML file to D1. So, don't know how many more times I need to say that. You got it. And with that, um, that's all I got. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. And as iron sharpens iron, so too does one man sharpen another. Thanks for watching.